um, there's also this day and night system, right? And the clouds that move along the sky, stuff like that. There should be a class that handles that kind of stuff. Um, so there are clouds that move here in a, I think, constant speed. I don't think they're affected by the player's current speed, but I could be wrong about that. Oops. But anyway, we, we need to uh, implement this as well somehow. So uh, yeah, um, there needs to be a class that is responsible for spawning these little clouds and also um, uh, that, handle, that also handles the day-night cycle system. Um, so let's call this the, I don't know, the sky manager. Uh, I need to sort this a little. Okay. So we will have to implement a class that we're going to name sky manager and it's also going to be a game entity. So the sky manager needs to spawn those little clouds. Yeah. Okay, let, let's let's keep it like that for now. We can add stuff later on. Uh okay, so our game will use game entities and we have identified a couple so far. The T-Rex, of course, is uh, the most important one. And there's the scoreboard, which shows the current score. We have the sky manager responsible for uh, the day-night cycle and the clouds and stars and the moon and stuff like that. We have some obstacles that we move along the screen, um, which is done by the obstacle manager class and uh, we have a ground manager class that handles all the uh, ground tiles mm. what else do we need well i think for now that's 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 fine uh, let's take a look at what methods and properties our t-rex class actually needs um, so obviously the T-Rex has one property that is very important, the current speed. Um, it will always have a current speed value which increases over time. So let's add a new property here. And actually put this up. I like to keep all the properties uh, on top. Um, and it's not going to be an integer because that would mean that it can only increment in, well, whole integer numbers. Um, we don't need the precision of a double, really. We could use a double, but I think a float will do. Whoops. What did I just do? Ah, oh, moved it back down. Sorry. Um, so in order to store the speed, we will have a property named speed of type float. Um, I think that should be fine. Um, I'm not sure if we need a public setter. Um, let's make it private for now. But since this is just a diagram, it's yeah, not that important. Um, so, okay. So it has a speed value, a speed property, and what else? Well, uh, for example, it needs, well, let's take a look at the methods. Um, we know that our T-Rex needs to be able to jump. So let's run into this cactus and go back into the diagram and add a new method here named jump and remember that uh, the t-rex will not always be able to jump for example if you're already in midair obviously you can't jump so it would be handy to have this uh, not return nothing but instead return a boolean value that indicates whether or not the jumping was successful. So if you're already in midair and try to call the jump method, it will just return false and 
not cause the T-Rex to jump. Um, I don't think it needs to take any arguments, so that's fine. So it will be a public method that returns a boolean named jump. So we can call that method to cause the T-Rex to jump. Um, what else? Uh, the T-Rex can duck. Oops. And we're going to do the same uh, thing here. For example, you can't duck uh, if you're in midair or if you're already ducking, stuff like that. Um, so makes sense to return true or false here. And uh, what else? Um, the T-Rex can, when you're already in the air and you press down, uh, you should, it should cause him to drop to the ground. It's just, just uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just uh, add a method named drop. I think that's fine. Uh, what else? I take a look. Okay, I can jump, I can duck, I can drop to the ground. And obviously, uh, he can sort of die <laughs> by running into an obstacle. Um, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, let's go ahead, have a method. Die. And Yeah, that should be it, I think. And uh, then we need a few properties more. For example, one that uh, indicates whether or not uh, the T-Rex is currently alive. So once uh, it has run into an obstacle, uh, you would call the die method, which would set the t-rex to uh to uh yeah a dead state so then the is alive property would return false and we're not going to have a setter on this is alive um property um we don't want to allow um a client of this class to to directly set this is a live property um, if they want the t-rex to die they should call the die method this is getting really dark <laughs> okay um, that's fine so what else maybe we should um, be able to determine the t-rex's current state because well, obviously it can be in different states, like um, for example, if I just reload here, it is basically idle and all it does is uh, do its little blink animation. Um, but as soon as I press any button, uh, it is in a running state and it can be in a jumping state and it can be in a ducking state. So I think it will come in handy to be able to um, check what state it is currently in. So let's model this state as a as a property. And uh, for that, let's introduce a new type, um, which will be an enum type, which is really just a fancy collection of integer constants, if you will. It's a little m more complex than that, but only slightly. Um, so let's call this uh, T-Rex state. That should be fine. And there can be four different states. Idle, running, jumping, ducking. Oh, actually, there's another one, falling. And our T-Rex class um, 
as a relationship to this uh, enumeration type direct state uh, in terms of uh, owning a property of that type. And I will move this up here. And I will just uh, add a property of type T-Rex state and it, I will just name it state. And you cannot directly set it from outside um, because it will be determined by the methods that you call. So if you call the jump method and it is successful, then obviously the T-Rex uh, transitions into the jumping state. Um, okay. Let's save this and let's see what else. Oh, it has a position on the screen, right? It needs to be rendered somewhere. We need to somehow tell the game where to actually um, render the T-Rex. Uh, so let's add a new property. Oops. And name it position. And um, the type will be actually vector2, um, which is a struct type that is included in the monogame framework. Um, it is basically um, a struct that is uh, composed of, uh, well, two components, an X component and a Y component. Um, so this is useful for uh, storing a location on the screen, right? Because it has an X value and a Y value. I mean, we could um, uh, model it as two individual values uh, of type float or double would be fine as well. Um, we're just going to go ahead and use monogames vector two. I think our T-Rex class is modeled just fine for now. Um, let's see. I know you want to like dig into the code and stuff, but I think it's um, for demonstration purposes and educational purposes. It's really, it really makes sense just to create a concept, um, analyze the problem that uh, you're facing, that the problem that you um, want to solve. The um, yeah, just really plan out the steps that you want to take to implement whatever it is that you want to create. Um, so yeah, T-Rex class is okay so far. Now, um, obviously, well, yeah, obviously we need a way to control this T-Rex. Now it has basically an, a public interface for us to, to interact with it um, by providing these, these methods, jump, duck, drop, whatever. Um, but yeah, we need to basically check for the player's input, check if the player uh, hit uh, a certain key on the keyboard or a button on the controller, uh, and then react to that by calling the appropriate method uh, in the T-Rex class. We could actually implement that logic in the T-Rex class, but I think it doesn't really, it kind of violates the um, separation of concern principle. Um, I don't think the T-Rex class should care about whether it is, whether or how it is controlled. It really doesn't care. It really shouldn't care. Um, so let's place this logic outside of the T-Rex class in a dedicated class that knows about the T-Rex and will call the appropriate methods and handle the input. Um, so let's go ahead and create a class here in our diagram that is named um, input controller. The input controller needs a reference to the T-Rex in order to, well, invoke the methods and stuff. Mm, so let's add a field here. I don't think we need a property. Let's just add it as a field, um, a private field of type T-Rex. And I like to um, prefix my private fields with an underscore. That's just a naming convention. Um, you don't have to do that. 
I just like to do it so I can instantly tell that this is a private field. Okay, so um, we'll have a private field of type T-Rex in order to have a reference to the actual player character and then it will need to implement logic for processing the player's input, or the user's input. Um, so let's give it a method. Um, it can be void, that's fine, um, and call it process controls, something like that. Um, and it should take um, an object of type game time, I think, because in some operations here maybe the, the time is, is important. Um, We'll see about that. Um, let's just actually go ahead. The input controller has an object of type T-Rex. We have a, a, of a um, ownership relationship here. So let's indicate this here using the correct uh, relationship. So this is an aggregation, so that means the input controller has an object of type T-Rex, which is uh, which can which we can tell by this field here, um, and we can actually annotate this and say I don't know, controls. So the input controller controls the T-Rex. Um, okay. We, we just need to know that there will be an input controller class that knows about the T-Rex uh, class, uh, an object of type T-Rex, and it will um, act upon this object um, during or within its process controls method. Um, yeah. Mm. And obviously um, the monogame framework provides a lot of classes with which we can check for input and handle it and stuff and the input controller will make use of that. Yeah, something that is really, really important is, well, we know that there will be game entities and we know that there will be a class representing the game itself. But how are the game entities managed? Um, how are they added to the game and removed from the game and how are they updated? How are they drawn? How are they rendered to the screen? Um, how is this handled? Um, let's actually, for that, create a new class named Entity Manager. I know there's a lot of classes here that uh, are called something something, something Manager, um, but I think that's just a very fitting name because it actually it doesn't really describe a real life object it's just a class that manages an object that manages something so it's quite fitting um okay so this entity manager will be responsible for um what happens on the screen or what what type what type of entities we currently have on the screen and what entities we need to update and stuff like that um, so entities, uh, the entity manager will, this will be an aggregation because the entity manager will store a collection of all game entities that are currently in the game and manage this collection. Um, let's see. Um, boop, boop. So our entity manager needs to have um, a field um, which stores all of the game entities that we created um, and for that we need some sort of collection type and uh, the most obvious choice here would be list um, so we'll just go with that There we go. So it has a private field of type list of i game entity objects. 
um, which will be used to, to manage uh, the collection of game entities. Um, list is a generic type, so um, it takes a, a type argument and uh, to specify what concrete type or what type um, the elements in this collection in this list will be and we specified to be the type i game entity because we know that all of our entity classes game entity classes implement this interface so um, yeah this is type safe now so we can put any object here that is of the type i game entity which is all of these here so that's fine um, yeah, then we need uh, a method to actually create or to add a new game entity to um, the game. Um, let's simply call this add, um, add entity. And it will take, as an argument, it will take the entity that we want to add. then we will have a method named remove entity and again you could argue that this is a little over the top a little maybe a little over designed um, since our game is very very simple we could just have our game directly handle that and not generalize it too much but again this is for educational purposes it could basically give you an idea of how you should or how you could go about creating your own game like this is a very simple example yeah right but uh, maybe you want to create your own game that is much more complex than that and it has maybe hundreds or thousands of entities that it needs to manage uh, then you can't use a, a, a design that is too simple this is really extensible and maintainable and uh, it should give you an idea of how, sh how you could go about um, creating your own game framework basically um, yeah for your own projects for your own stuff um, so yeah, let's go ahead here. Um, we need to be able to add new entities to the game. We need to be able to remove them. Um, maybe there should be a method to remove all of them. So let's uh, have a method named clear. And it will just remove all of the game entities that are currently in the, in the game. Oh yeah, that's something that is really important. Um, we, we do have a draw method. But we can't currently, with this design, tell the game um, what entity and in what order to draw the entities, right? So um, right now the the um, order would be dependent on which or whose draw method we call first. Um, so um, we need to be able to somehow specify the draw order um, for those game entities. So let's actually include another property here in our game entity um, interface. Um, new property. And let's have it uh, be of type integer. That is perfectly fine. And call it draw priority or something. Draw order. Draw order is fine. Uh, and it can have a setter that is also fine. Mm. Or well, actually, it doesn't really need a setter, I think. Maybe we can add one if we actually notice or actually get problems with this. Um, so uh, the point is that there needs to be a way to determine um, in what order to draw render all of the game entities so if we force um, the all of the implementations here of I game entity to include a integer property uh, named draw order that returns some value that indicates the order um, yeah then we can achieve that we can simply then sort 
all of the game entities by their draw order value and then call the um, draw method in the appropriate order. So um, you will see exactly what I mean uh, as soon as we get to actually coding. Um, okay. Um, that brings me to the next method we need here. The entity manager needs to be able to update all of the um, entities. So let's put a new method in here. It can be void, that's that should be fine. And call it update as well, or update entities. It doesn't really matter. Um, and it also takes a game time object as an argument and draw entities, which will take a sprite batch to use for the drawing. Um, game time. There we go. Let's make this a little bigger so we can actually see all of this. There we go. Save. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I think this should give you an idea. So now we do have an entity manager class that does all this magical great stuff. Uh, but we need to actually use it somewhere and our game class will actually be responsible for that. So our game class will use this entity manager class and we are going to use a composition here. A composition is similar to an aggregation but um, the difference is that here um, we tightly couple the lifetime of the both of both the objects which basically means if the game is destroyed, the entity manager is as well, right? Because the entity manager lives in the game. And if this object here is destroyed, uh, so is this one. Uh, now, let's put a field in here, which is private and is of type entity manager. There we go. And yeah. Um, our scoreboard obviously needs to st uh, store the current score, um, which is an integer because, um, yeah, as you can see here, it, it's not shown in decimals or anything. So that is fine. Uh, score. And a high, high score. Let's abbreviate this. So it stores the current score and the current high score. And I think this is as far as our concept goes for now. I think now we can actually uh, get started coding a little bit. Um, I know this is what you're waiting for, but um, I think it's really important for for the sake of the education, uh, it's good to have a thorough uh, concept phase. Um, okay, then let's get cracking.